Hi, everyone. So you're very welcome to our uh, alumni panel series on careers in the retail sector. My name is Michelle Cohen and I'm a career and skills consultant for the College of Arts and Humanities. And also joining me is my colleague, Sarah Brown. And Sarah is the career and skills consultant for social sciences and law. So uh, you may be aware of uh, our alumni panel series. You might have been at some of our previous events, but if not, just to let you know, uh, previous topics we've covered include the um, uh, careers uh, uh, alumni panel on uh, the public sector and government um, and also careers in the EU. And um, so those sessions are recorded and are available on our YouTube channel, the uh, UCD Careers Network uh, YouTube channel, if you're interested in those. Um, so joining me today is uh, Sean O'Keefe and Sean is a project manager at Lidl um, and he completed his degree in a BA in modern languages at UCD. So we'd be very interested to hear about his career path, how he transitioned from his degree program into his current role and what it's like to, to work at Lidl as a, an organisation. So please feel free to type into chat um, any questions that you have. And my colleague Sarah is going to be managing all the Q&A um, and we'll be uh, taking uh, various intervals to, to check in on the, the questions as we go along. So please don't be shy, it's your event. So please free, feel free to ask any questions that you want. So Sean, I might uh, start with you um, and just ask us, uh, or just get you to tell us a little bit about why you picked the particular degree course that you did and tell us a little bit about your, your time at UCD. Sure, so um, the reason why I picked the course, probably a fairly typical reason, I had a really, really good Spanish teacher when I was in secondary school, Ms. Coveney, uh, she had a great job. We, everyone in the class really achieved quite a high standard of, of Spanish, but I uh, took a real interest in it. Um, I started listening to Spanish music and watching Spanish uh, videos and TV shows, taking an interest outside of it. So I kind of knew that language was an area that I wanted to go into after the leaving cert. So um, I settled on the BA for International Modern Languages in UCD because I wanted that to be really my focus. I picked up German as a beginner language. Um, and uh, took it from there basically. So I did my Erasmus year in Berlin um, over the course of which I really, really uh, studied hard, tried hard, improved my German because it was the weaker before I left. And then uh, came back to UCD to do my final year, obviously. Um, after I did my final exams, I actually took the C2 proficiency test for German uh, with the Goethe Institute, which was a really big asset especially for Lidl, obviously I was able to prove my German proficiency um, out the gate. And that kind of is, was one of the main factors in, in getting my role in Lidl. So that's kind of start to finish. Very good, very good. And were you involved in kind of extracurricular activities at UCD? Were you involved in societies or what did you do outside the library? Um, truthfully, I wasn't massively active with extracurricular stuff. Um, I took quite a few classes and went to the gym on final year definitely and I went to German society events on occasion too um okay. so that was good I mean increased my exposure to German culture um and ahead of the Erasmus year was actually quite helpful um yeah that was it for me really though yeah very good and I'd imagine Erasmus was a, a great talking point at, at interview can you recall kind of some of the skills you would have felt you did developed from from studying abroad Sure. I mean, I mean, the first one really was just the experience of um, being away from home and not just away from home, but being very far away from home. That feeling of independence um, was a huge change for me. I mean, I, I never really had lived out of my parents' house, even when I was in UCD. So um, that was a huge shift, having to suddenly uh, meet new people, make new friends all in the foreign language. It was um, very challenging at first, but also really, really rewarding in terms of you kind of learn life skills that you didn't even know that you needed to learn in pretty much every department. Um, with regard to, let's say, you know, careers relevant skills, I did an awful lot of project work over there, group work. Uh, again, that was all through a foreign language, which I wasn't completely secure in before I left. So when you have that language barrier, I think, uh, you know, there's a different set of challenges that, that crop up and it really, um, it kind of tests your abilities in that regard when you're interacting with other people and when you're doing college work and project work. So, um, yeah, no, it was definitely very, very valuable. And I'm um, delighted that I went. 
very good very good sounds very positive experience um and and sean kind of when final year approached and final exams what were your next steps yeah well that time was very um it was anxiety ridden for me really because i didn't i didn't really have a clear plan in the lead up to my exams i had been working a part-time job uh in a call center uh mainly just to get money and uh I kind of knew that that wasn't really a viable option in the medium or long term. Not that I was bad at it, but I didn't really enjoy it particularly. Um, so I gave my notice there just as I was coming up to the final exam. So I'd have time to study and all. Um, after the final exams were done, I, like you, like Laura said, just started looking around online, looking for roles. Um, uh, before I actually ended up getting an interview from there, though, I got an email from Zabina Strumpakop, who is was the coordinator of the International Modern Languages uh, degree path. And a past student who was in that path, Sarah Gordon, was working in Lidl. And she said that there are three roles uh, going up online if anyone wants to um, apply. So what I did was I chose one of the roles, put her down as a reference, and ended up getting an interview from there. So what? in many ways, I'm very, I'm very fortunate. I didn't have that kind of really long seeking period where uh, where things were very uncertain. I was able to kind of go into working with Lidl um, fairly quickly afterwards. Uh, so very grateful for that, I suppose. Yeah, very good. And Sarah actually has been um, at some of our uh, previous graduate events. She's a, a great ambassador for for German uh, German language. Um, so very good. So um, uh, and I suppose, Sean, you might tell us a little bit about your your kind of journey because you've kind of transitioned through the company to your current role. So do you want to tell us a little bit about um, th those stages and the different roles that you had? Sure. So um, it's been the same department the whole time. It's been the sales organization, which um, it's kind of a kitchen sink catch all department. It's pretty much everything um, that directly interfaces with the stores and the regional centers in Lidl. Um, so there's a lot more store based work, a lot more dealing with store teams than you'd have in other you know, departments in the company, like, say, purchasing or logistics or, or what have you. Um, so I entered the role as sales organization coordinator, which I always kind of thought sounded like, um, you know, Chandler's job title in France. <laughs> if you say you're a sales organization coordinator, people have no idea what you're talking about, um, which involved a lot of translation. And that's why um, my German came in so handy. They were looking for someone who had proficient German. So I spent a year in that role. Um, so that was just coming up to the kind of tail end of last year, around September, October, I think. And that was when a PM role came up um, in the department, which is kind of the next level up from a uh, coordinator. Uh, and I went for it and thankfully I got it. Um, having the coordinator role uh, really, really helped. Uh, I kind of took on extra tasks as part of that. So really, if you're just doing the core tasks of the coordinator role, you're not spending a lot of time in stores, you're doing a lot of translation work. It's a lot of laptop based stuff. I tried to get involved in you know, other people in the department, their projects. Um, and that gave me kind of more and more experience in different areas of the business, uh, gave me contacts in other departments and that kind of stood to me when I went for the PM role. So since I took on the PM role, I've been responsible for lots of different areas. Um, at first, I was responsible for inventory and stock management. So that's stock takes and stock management in general, how stores can improve their inventory results. Uh, I've also been in charge of ARIS, which is basically a big process system that Lidl has to define standard procedures and most recently I've been working on store productivity planning productivity uh, for the new financial year so um, yeah. been through a lot in a fairly short space of time. Yeah absolutely um, and is there an opportunity like to to do further study like in project management or is that kind of just learning on the job part part of the role? Uh, there is a very strong learning and development department with a catalogue of courses you can do in Lidl. Uh, I've had good experiences with them so far. They have, for example, I think a two-day PM course that I went on. Um, a lot of that is very Lidl specific because there's certain procedures that you have to go through, but a lot of the skills I would say are very much transferable. Uh, there's other trainings too. There is, you know, communication, strong conversations, the, the sort of stuff that you might expect. So there's uh, there's resources there if you want to kind of improve your skills um, and you can discuss it with your manager and uh, and take training as you go through the company. Very good, very good. And I know you're based in Ireland, obviously, but are you using your German on a daily basis or does that come into your role kind of on an ad hoc basis? 
I'd say I had a lot, an awful lot of translation work to do when I was still coordinator. So I would have been dealing with it near daily then. Um, maybe a little bit less now. Uh, I'll say it's mostly written German that I deal with. Okay. Um, I do have a call with an international colleague next week, actually, coincidentally. So in those cases, you would, of course, speak German um, because they're raised in Neckarsulm in Germany. But uh, yeah, I'd say at least weekly, often kind of daily dealings with written German anyway. And, and that helps a lot. I mean, uh, um, I do have colleagues who don't have German and it's fairly tough if you get, you know, an email from international or that contains, you know, uh, documents in German and they need someone else to help them out before they can interpret it so it's, it's definitely still an asset. So I might just check in with Sarah. Um, Sarah's been manning the, the Q&A and, and the questions yeah. for us. <laughs> um, we've got a, a really good question here actually. How would you have answered the why little question? So maybe we'll go to Sean first. So why, why little? Well, little. Um, for me personally, uh, I'm a complete language nerd and I love using my language. So somewhere where I get to use German regularly is something, it's always somewhere I wanted to end up immediately out of college. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been really good for me working with Lidl. Um, in general, why Lidl? I would say um, good wages, good expectations with regard to hours for office staff. Um, mm -hmm. And I do appreciate the fact that within the retail sector in Ireland at least, uh, Lidl Ireland has been um, kind of very good about uh, guaranteeing hours for store staff and the like. Mm -hmm. So um, those are all those those would all be factors um, for me in 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 saying say advocating Lidl over other retail. Perfect. Um, we also have a, a another question from um, Naman as well. Um, is there anything that you expected your um, provide in the workplace, but perhaps it wasn't quite the same as what you expected? So anything, I guess, that didn't match your expectations um, when you joined the company? Uh, for me, so I think about it, like, I don't know, I, I expected, um, I expected more German, honestly. The head office staff generally has um, fairly good English. Uh, the level mm -hmm. the level to which language skills apply in different jobs will obviously depend on the company a lot. There are other companies where, I mean, if it's, if it's a foreign company, you absolutely need to know that language. But um, really, it is possible to get by with, with English and lead, although German is an asset. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of other areas, I don't know. I think um, from the outside looking in, my impression was that... Um, Lidl office workers would often work very hard potentially for long hours longer than you might expect and um, and where maybe that was part of the culture slash tolerated beforehand I can say that recently my own personal experience has been not so much uh, I found that uh, management have very good expectations with regard to hours and with working conditions mm -hmm. um, so I've been kind of maybe positively um, yeah, possibly surprised on that front. Again, I can only speak to my own personal experience, but yeah. that's definitely been my impression. Well, that's good. Some some positive um, kind of over expectations. <laughs> Very good. Um, um, well, no more questions at this point. But if anyone wants to add some more, we can we can take them as we go, can't we? Yeah, absolutely. We'll check back in in a, in a few minutes. Perfect. Um, uh, thanks, Sarah. Um, so we might. Like it'd be nice to hear a little bit about kind of what it's like to work in the, in the head office, the type of roles, the, the structure, the culture. Um, so I know, Sean, you're based in Tala. Um, it'd be nice to hear a little bit about kind of, I suppose, the head office, kind of the roles. People mightn't realise there's such a whole array of, of different departments and roles uh, in, in head office. Um, I can say the building's beautiful. If anyone's seen the building in Tala, it's kind of the big, big modern uh, block on the inside. It's absolutely gorgeous. Lots of glass, very bright. And um, so just as a work environment, the building itself is very nice. So you get um, purchasing, marketing, legal and compliance. Um, my particular section is operations. So that comprises uh, logistics, supply chain and sales organization. Sales org being my department. Um, and from my position, it's, it's it's quite good because it allows you to work with lots of different areas within the building. Um, so say, for example, if you're working on signage in store, you might 
you know, talk with people from marketing or advertising. If you're working on something involving technology and store, you're probably dealing with IT and kind of dealing as that midpoint between the two. Um, so I've had the opportunity to work with quite a few different departments uh, and kind of people from all different areas of the business uh, in that regard. Um, in terms of the office environment, it's definitely um, very open, similar, you can kind of, uh, you can chat to different people. There's hot desking um, in within areas. So you end up between dip, beside different members of your own team or even different members uh, of the same area. So you kind of get to know people that way. And um, yeah, but obviously we've been, we've been pretty much working from home. We were back for a month there and um, they introduced kind of social distancing in the office and they had us all back in for a month. Uh, but then when level five hit, we've all gone back to working from home. Um, so since then, we haven't really been in the office, only if we need to use systems that are located in there or if we absolutely have to be. Um, so yeah, working from home now for the minute, but um, it's, a, it's a nice office to work in when we get the chance. Very good, very good. And for you, is there travel opportunities or obviously not at the moment, but previously or? Yeah, no, I personally haven't been able to travel internationally, but I'd be traveling uh, all around the island of Ireland, including to Northern Ireland, visiting stores, especially when I was um, dealing with inventory and stock control, I'd go driving to different stores around the country, attending their stock takes. So I've been to all different towns, all different spots. That's obviously been affected with COVID as well. Those sure. sorts of store visits don't necessarily go on. It's down to what's necessary for project work or for um, just helping the stores out. Uh, but no, I've been up to Northern Ireland. I've been down to Cork. I've been all across the country. Uh, there's also international trips. I haven't been on one yet, as it happens. But I've had uh, colleagues go to the little GB office in Wimbledon and also to um, international in Neckarsulm in Germany. Uh, to deal with international, just say there's an international project that's being rolled out to all the countries, often there'll be workshops uh, going on in Germany and people get the chance to go there. Um, so there's travel opportunities uh, within Lidl, definitely. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, and just before we check in on, on questions again, um, maybe just to share a little bit of like, what do you enjoy the most about your role and what's, what's maybe a, a challenge? Hmm. Um, well, I guess for me, it's kind of a double-ended thing where um, my role is quite dynamic, both within a week, week to week, you know, month to month. You can be working on very different things depending on what you're working on. You could be working on different projects related to different areas of the store. Um, so in that way, depending on what exactly you're working on, one day to the next might look very, very different. Uh, which is good it's simulating you learn a lot you um you know you pick up a lot of skills um but obviously if you're not managing your time if you're not thinking about how am i going to fit this in how am i going to prioritize tasks um then obviously it can kind of it can kind of uh run away on you so it's just a case of um prioritizing time management um which obviously means that you know you develop those skills as well but um, yeah, as long as you stay on top of things, um, it's honestly, it's, it's rewarding. And uh, I, I would say it's a positive. Was there anything that kind of surprised you when you started in your roles? Anything that you kind of, you weren't sure that it'd be part of, of your kind of job responsibilities or anything that was just kind of unexpected when you, when you started in your current roles? Uh, to Sean, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm staring at the screen there, but I'm not saying your name, Sean. <laughs> um, uh, well, I would say everyone does two weeks store training when they join the company. I'm not, actually, I'm not sure if it's a full two weeks. It's, it's two weeks for sales work, certainly, because you deal with the stores a lot. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, I gained a lot, a lot of appreciation for the physicality of the role, um, how genuinely quite difficult the role can be. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of gained an appreciation for the work that goes on in the stores it's very important to keep an awareness of that when you're working mm -hmm. in head office it's, you know yeah. if you're not visiting stores a lot if you're not dealing with store teams it's quite easy to end up kind of um getting a only a bird's eye view and not you know not remembering or realizing what the actual experience of working in store is mm -hmm. so there were certain yeah. aspects certainly of working in store that surprised me and that i've tried to internalize and carry into other areas of, of my work it's always important to consider how something that you're introducing or that you're working on uh, might affect someone in store. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that would be my answer. Fantastic. And um, are you kind of involved in, I don't know, I suppose like, you know, 
bring about like um, buy-in from people within the stores or is that part of someone else's responsibility or, or how does that kind of work when you instigate new processes? Hmm. So um, sales org would own a lot of projects that would affect store processes. So examples would be mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff from new ordering systems to new procedures to um, you know, new uses for the handhelds in store, um, mm -hmm. new procedures with stock takes, all that sort of stuff. And with all of that, you need to be constantly communicating with area managers, with store managers, with, with store teams. I mean, it's all well and good mm -hmm. talking to an area manager, but if the task that you're working on is something that's carried out by customer assistant, you, you need to talk to, to customer assistants as well mm -hmm. to figure mm -hmm. out what their, what their impression is. Obviously, the goal is to make things easier not harder more efficient mm -hmm. not you know uh, and so in that regard it is kind of an opportunity to help the stores and to free up man hours uh, with mm -hmm. little efficiency is obviously a big um it's a big focus mm -hmm. and you know any hour that you're not spending on a certain task uh, it kind of frees up time for the store staff so that they're um maybe a little bit less under pressure mm -hmm. so yeah you'd be interfacing with um the regional centers with area managers with all different people depending on whatever you're working on it, mm -hmm. it might affect different parties but you want to you know keep all stakeholders involved at all stages and sean maybe similar question to you like what's the kind of opportunities and i, I guess the support for career development within lidl um well in terms of progression and moving around i can say it's, it's something that's very common in lidl that happens all the time um, mm -hmm. especially common I would say is moving between departments we were talking about Sarah Gordon earlier she's had two or three roles since I joined the company alone and um, it's very very common for people to move from one department to another and um, kind of similar to what you said there Laura like you, you you can kind of say right well I've seen this role now I'd like to try something different and obviously all the job postings go up on the on the website and um, so it's very common for people to move around um, and Similarly, you get people from all different backgrounds. There's people who would have started off in store. There's people who would have started off um, working in the region, uh, people with bachelors, people without uh, third level qualifications, people with uh, with masters. Um, so it's a really broad spectrum and there's a lot of scope for yeah. movement. Very good. And are there kind of career like mentoring opportunities and, and kind of things like that to help people figure out maybe what their next steps are or is there anything kind of specific in place or is it more just kind of seeing where you feel um the next kind of exciting opportunity may may lie yeah i'd say i'd say more of that generally mm -hmm. speaking there's a lot of there's a lot of communication between departments and you do get mm -hmm. a good feel a good impression for what other people are working on mm -hmm. um often your work will lead you to deal quite extensively with one other department or multiple other departments so you kind of get a good impression of the lay of the land there and it's yeah. how you kind of um kind of pick out right i might be interested in this or no i definitely don't want to do that or, mm -hmm. or you know so so you can just keep an eye out then for yeah. for, for vacancies uh, coming up very good thanks very much go back to you michelle <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, Sarah. So that's really, really good questions coming in there. And um, so as well, I'm conscious of time just because some people might have to pop off to a four o'clock lecture. So just uh, maybe a, a final question to you both around if audience members were interested and thinking of applying just a little bit about the recruitment process. What tips would you share, uh, Sean? So if someone was applying for and had an interview with Lidl, what were your takeaways from your recruitment experience? Hmm. Um, well, Certainly, I think that's good advice about trying not to be nervous, trying to pretty much just be yourself. Um, like was said there, they're, they're looking to find good things. They're not looking to catch you out on the bad things. This, though, is coming from someone who hates interviews. I really I, I don't like them. I don't <laughs> feel like I do well in them. Um, I think that, um, at least for Lidl, my experience, I've been through two uh, interviews. It might be similar in other retail sectors. Well, name the past situation in which you exhibited X, Y, Z is a very common formula. And uh, it's one that I struggle with because it's hard to come up with something on the spot if you haven't prepared. And um, going over interview questions ahead of time is really important. And um, again, volume is also important with, with interviews. The, the more routine and the more used to the whole process that you are, um, the more self-assured you're going to come off. So like that, if you, if you don't make your first interview, well, it was your first one, you know, you, you can go through 
more and you'll probably get more confident and more proficient over time so um yeah very good very good um that's a really good advice um so I suppose just um, um, we're coming up to four o'clock. So um, I suppose uh, just to mention that uh, Sarah has popped an evaluation into the chat box. So if you could complete and give us a little bit of feedback, that would be much appreciated. Um, and I suppose to Sean and Laura, thank you both very much for giving up your time to share your experiences. Um, it's so invaluable for our current students to hear from alumni about their career path. It's really, really helpful because it, it really opens up lots of different and careers and, and options so your time is much appreciated and just to say both of you are excellent ambassadors for your roles and your companies um, it sounds like you're uh, doing doing really well in your jobs but also really enjoying them and thanks to Sarah for navigating uh, the, the questions and to our audience I can see people have, are flying off already um, so the recording will be available on our YouTube channel if you want to re-listen um, and be sure to, to share with your, your friends um, so thank you Sean and Laura and uh, continued success in your in your roles thank you very much thanks very much thank you